Well, let's talk about some very specific examples of how I am is changing in light of uh, this, this new era that we find ourselves in. And so I think a place where it makes uh, perhaps most logical sense to begin would be how um, COVID again accelerated uh, migration to the cloud. Companies are being driven there. This was already something that was uh, happening gradually, but it's obviously picked up pace pretty dramatically. And you need to have that uh, architecture that can facilitate being able to work remotely and then having the access that you need to your cloud-based assets. Uh, if, if you're a company that is still working on some of those early generation tools, you, you may not, uh, for I am, you may not be in the best position now to uh, meet some of these new I am challenges. So maybe uh, talk a little bit about the challenges first in that regard, and then we can uh, then go into maybe some of the solutions or policies that can uh, help uh, alleviate some of those issues. Yeah, absolutely. So when you talk about uh, first generation tools, that they are designed very well to manage applications and traditional infrastructure. Um, but as we were talking about earlier, uh, most enterprises have been moving to the cloud in general and that all accel accelerated during uh, the COVID period that started February, March of 2020. So one of the things that you need to be looking at uh, at a very basic level is my directory infrastructures. So something like a traditional active directory, which by the way, is gonna be around for uh, a good period of time because ge general plumbing doesn't go away overnight. But, but Active Directory isn't designed to support cloud applications. So you have to be looking at other, at other tools, uh, you know, like Azure Directory, and there's a number of other ones that, that, uh, that you can consider. Um, but just having a directory infrastructure that allows you to move from traditional infrastructure to the cloud or hybrid environment is step number one. And then making sure that you have the, the flexibility to have identity infrastructure uh, going beyond directories such as uh, web authentication or extended uh, authentication or authorization. Um, uh, those, those are the, the next set of things that you have to be looking at. Um, and, and, and then we can look at sp uh, authentication in a deeper context. So historically, um, IDs and passwords are, are what have been used and sometimes two-factor authentication uh, with what would now be considered um, tools that, that are not particularly friendly to the average employee or customer. And you know we've been talking about moving away from IDs and passwords for a very long time. I seem to recall that my first conversation about that was a little over 20 years ago, um, but um, organizations generally don't like to change. You know, there's, there's a lot of pain that's involved in change. On the other hand, uh, we, we were forced to make changes uh, in terms of accelerating digital transformation and thus the identity tools when COVID started. So companies have started to take a look at, at those types of tools. And, and now we're, you know, if you look at the market, there's tools like Beyond Identity and Transmit that are major players and are getting really robust investments so that they can scale in their customer base. So we, we've, we've reached this tipping point where there, there's, there's been uh, an imperative to, uh, to accelerate digital transformation and identity tools that complement that digital transformation. Um, and, and, you know, I think the other thing is that, well, there's two other things. One of it is the, the, the cybersecurity climate that we're operating in, you know, ransomware attacks have not only uh, become uh, much more aggressive in nature, but there's a much larger quantity of them. And in a good variety of cases, uh, account takeover is one of the characteristics of ransomware attacks. So being able to have solid control and a strategic approach to identity and authentication uh, becomes really important. The other aspect is the changes in regulations uh, over the last few years. So I was talking about Sarbanes-Oxley, uh, a good uh, 
good number of years ago in the 2003, 2004 timeframe. We now have other legislation such as GDPR in Europe. Uh, we have CCPA in California uh, that, uh, you, that, that require you to make sure that you're managing identity and protecting the privacy of, of people's identity. So these next generation tools allow you to do that. Uh, and, and I would also say that, that regulatory changes are, are a constant, right? We don't know what's gonna happen a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, but having a strategic uh, approach to identity will more than likely allow an organization to comply with not just current, but future regulatory changes.